Western Massachusetts would certainly be a very different place without the Sisters of Providence. Since 1873, this community of women religious has changed the landscape of health care for all ages through their numerous healing ministries. Despite their dwindling numbers, the Sisters of Providence continue to be a strong presence throughout the Springfield Diocese, demonstrating a resilient energy as they forge ahead with new ministries always on the cutting edge. Terry Burgett sat down with the new Executive Council to discuss the legacy of this prominent group of women. It is the best of times, it is the worst of times. Sister Kathleen Popko nearly echoed the famous words of Charles Dickens during her third installation as president of the Sisters of Providence last fall. For the religious community whose mission has been hope and healing in Western Massachusetts since 1873, much has changed. Certainly the numbers of sisters have changed, the issues we're dealing with uh, are uh, perhaps sh more sharply defined, and the issues that our country is dealing with are, are um, ones that are addressing the, almost the, the demise of many institutions that we've known and trusted for years. So we're part of that change and that turmoil. The community, founded by Mother Mary of Providence, Catherine Horan, is best known for its care of the sick and the poor. They founded such facilities as Brightside for Children, Mercy Hospital, and Mount St. Vincent Nursing Home. During the 1980s, the sisters brought their ministries together under the umbrella of the Sisters of Providence Health System. Today, as a member of Catholic Health East, they work to provide access to value-based health care for people throughout the region. We've had an impact over these 12 years uh, and will continue to advocate for those most in need, particularly in the areas of mental health, care for children, and certainly access for everyone. For the last 20 years, the congregation has focused on women, the earth, and the poor. Our outreach to women and how we were going to respond have taken new forms and shapes as our sisters have responded to different needs, whether it's working at Annie's house with Sister Sangha or working with the women who have been at Broderick House. Care of the Earth and our understanding of global warming has a, a much more uh, critical uh, view to it than it did when we began thinking about protecting the Earth. Last September, the sisters donated 25 acres of land to a trust now called the Land of Providence. They have always had reverence for the outdoors, evident in the surroundings of Genesis Spiritual Life Center in Westfield, where their corporate stand for peace begins at home with retreats and spiritual workshops for everyone. In many ways, you know, peace is a healing ministry. When, when you really look at, at the, the cause of peace, the causes of peace, that are relevant in our world today. The cause of peace is right before us in our own lives and our own families. We focus a lot on the larger picture, which is very important, but it begins with us. Sister Mary Caritas served as president from 1969 until 1977. During her tenure, there were 450 sisters. Today, there are 54. Despite their dwindling numbers, the Sisters of Providence continue to find new ways to assure that their charism and their legacy remain alive, evident in their ever-evolving ministries. Their latest project, Mary's Meadow, is the first long-term care facility of its kind in all of New England. As for the future of the Sisters of Providence, the torch is being passed on to the laity within their lay associate program and beyond. We try to work through the people who are in leadership and people in mission and in the mission department to continue to keep alive the legacy of the Sisters of Providence. The things that inspired us to enter into health care, into uh, human service, child care. And uh, I think we've done fairly, a fairly good job in terms of inspiring other people because we know full well this is the era of the laity. Forever trusting in God's providence, these women religious forge ahead in the Ministry of Healing with great hope. Reporting in Holyoke, I'm Terry Brigette for Real to Real.